Hey, what's up, guys? You get Gypsy back here today with uh, my <laughs> MPL Season 8 draft analysis. Long last. Pretty excited to be bringing you guys this one, and yeah, happy to have some more MPL content back up on the channel. It's been a little, it's been a little while since um, obviously finals were uploaded. A nice little break we had between um, you know the end of Sun and Moon and this new gen coming out. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting to have you know MPL back. And yeah, it feels good to be recording again. I haven't recorded in a couple of weeks time. So uh, yeah, it's nice to be back on the YouTube upload grind. Um, but uh, if you can call it that. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, we're going we're gonna to jump into we're going to jump into the team I have drafted this season of the MPL. The MPL uh, for season eight has seen a bunch of coaches from the majors um, actually move away from the league, unfortunately, due to like time. Uh, restraints or just certain people getting um, relegated last season or just leaving um, I guess because they were going to get relegated <laughs> but um, we uh, we do have an influx of new coaches from the minors and we have we have a we have a few new guys uh, who are gonna well, a few returning faces I guess I should say um, and uh, that's that's pretty exciting to see these guys back in the league um, unfortunately guys like Jolt had to step away from it this season because of just like time commitments with real life and uh, other leagues so uh yeah mum and joel's still going to be commissioning the league obviously go commissioner but um it is obviously sad to see him go uh, i'm sure he'll be back in future seasons though if, if time permits but yeah without without carrying on about that too much um i want to preface this recap by mentioning that uh, i was actually given the first pick overall in uh, where exactly i wanted to be placed in the draft order so in seasons past, there wasn't really a um, a kind of like, I guess, prize for like for winning the league, for putting in all the hard work to winning the league. And uh, in the off season from last season, the kind of the league had a discussion on uh, whether or not they wanted to you know give the winner some sort of uh, I guess prize. And um, yep, there was a lot of support for um, the winner to either get um, more points in a points based system or to get a choice of where they wanted to go in the draft. And uh, it was pretty unanimous that um, picking where they wanted to go in the draft would be uh, a bit better overall because maybe having more points, uh, some people considered that a bit too a bit too much, which I'm totally fine with. Like getting to choose where I wanted to be placed in the draft, I think was really cool, and I was, uh, you know, definitely keen to accept that. And uh, yeah, I think it's very cool by the league. Hopefully, that'll be a precedent moving forward. So whoever wins, you know, this season of the NPL will you know be rewarded in the coming seasons if they do decide to stick around. So. I think it's a pretty cool idea, and I think um, you know other leagues could learn from it because you know you really should. Um, it just gives incentive for people to to really um, you know try hard. Apart from obviously winning the league and the glory and all that shit, but yeah, it's nice to have some sort of tangible reward. Um, so I was actually you know actually decided that I'd pick a number one because I actually haven't had uh, the first overall pick in a league in I don't know how long. Um, maybe never. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, I was I was pretty keen to to pick a mon that I wanted to like to guarantee myself a mon that I was excited to use. And honestly, you know, if you guys have been watching my channel lately, you've seen me use a lot of Celesteela, and I love Celi. Um, I think I think the community as a whole knows by now that Celesteela is, without a doubt, one of if not the best um, mon in the format. For many reasons, you guys are all smart. You guys have seen my like my battles. You, you know how good Celi is. Um, and obviously other people have used Sally really, really well. And, uh, yeah, it was definitely a mon that I was contemplating, uh, as well as Lando T. Lando T is just a real, a real, like, personal favorite of mine. I just love that mon. Um, but actually, we did a really interesting thing in the off-season. We did end up, um, doing a bit of, we did, we did end up doing a bit of, um, suspect testing on mons that were in the past deemed to potentially overpowered to be allowed in the format. Um, because yeah, with the power creep of this, of, you know, the recent generations, the recent games, <laughs> a lot of these mons actually deserve to be looked at and to be potentially considered or even just discussed for a uh, suspect test. And that's actually what we did. And I think it's a really healthy thing to do. I don't think you should have just a stale roster, especially in when there's a generational shift and there isn't much change. Like in Ultra Sun and Moon, we saw a lot of the defog, um, a lot of the move tutors and stuff bring viability to a lot of mons that were previously pretty bad, which I think is cool. But at the same time, there weren't a ton of new mons introduced or anything like that. And, um, you know, improving or just expanding on the draft pool of potential mons that you can, you know, potential really viable mons, I think is a really cool concept. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that we did something like that in the off season. But uh, yeah, 
<laughs> long story short, we did end up unbanning a few mods. So stuff like Landorus Eye was unbanned. And Landorus Eye, I think, is completely fair enough. It's allowed in a ton of other leagues. Um, the argument that it's broken um, is, uh, I think, flawed because I don't, I don't think it's broken in the sense that it doesn't have counterplay. Um, you could you could make the argument that Magina is is broken. Um, although my stance on that has changed a bit over the past few draft league seasons that I've been in, um, I think Magina is still like leagues ahead of Landorus in terms of its ability to just reverse 6-0 a team. Uh, Landorus I like whilst it, it is immensely strong, um, there is a lot more counterplay to it. Um, it's slower. It doesn't have the defensive typing of something like Magina. Um, it's, yeah, and it's very strong, but it's not, <laughs> it's not a, it's not an unstoppable train that, you know, cannot be checked. Um, I think it was, we're perfectly fine in unbanning that. And, uh, yeah, it was definitely a mod that I thought about, but honestly, I'd probably take Lando T over Lando I just because Lando I is a very fun mod, but I don't think it's a, it's a pick one. <laughs> it's not something that I'd take with the very first pick. If I was like late in round one and, you know, it was still around, I'd probably grab it. But uh, honestly, the mod that I wanted to get really most of all was Celesteela, but it was actually another mon that we ended up on banning, and uh, I couldn't really afford not to take it, like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to use this thing in the format again, and it was another steal, and steals are, like, in my opinion, the most important typing now uh, in this generation, I think steals have just become more and more critical to have on a team, uh, if you look at a lot of the teams that succeed in, in draft league format, especially in, in the more competitive leagues like the MPL, uh, typically, they'll have a really fantastic steal on it. Um, it's just, it's just how it is. Steel's just such an amazing off uh, defensive typing, and what it brings to a team, no other typing can really do. So, <laughs> um, yeah, with my first overall pick of the season eight draft, I did actually grab Aegis Slash. So, <laughs> Aegis Slash is a very, very interesting one. Uh, pretty controversial if you're thinking of it purely based on how it was in the kind of X Y meta game when it was introduced. Uh, it did end up getting banned from standard play. Um, the main argument for that was that its ability stance change in conjunction with King Shield forced like uncompetitive 50-50 situations that um, oftentimes the person with the Age of Slash would come out on top. You were at a disadvantage by not using Age of Slash on a team, so it did sort of kind of the metagame was centralized around Age of Slash. That's why like a lot of people had an issue with it. Um, but uh, yeah, we got we got AG, and uh, you know a lot of time has passed since XY. I think AG like AG was obviously banned in um, in Sumo as well, like Sun and Moon, uh, obviously. But um, in Draft League, it's a little different. Um, there is a bit more counterplay to it in Draft League because you can prep. You, you know your opponent has Aegislash, Slash, um, and you can prep accordingly. Um, you can prep in a way to attempt to play around King Shield, although that can also be, you know, with the right building on the person who has Age Slash, that can also be uh, countered. So it's uh, it's certainly not an exploitable mon, but it's it's maybe a little bit easier to take on than it was in, in the standard format. But honestly, AG is going to be a ton of fun to use. I'm very excited to use this thing. I don't need to tell you guys what this thing does. If you if you've been playing mons for a while, you'll know how good Age Slash is. Um, the offensive versatility on this mon is insane, um, but honestly, the defensive glue that it provides to a team is probably its best asset. Like, yeah, it's an offensive behemoth in blade form, um, but it's just the defensive glue factor in in the right amongst the right core of Pokemon uh, is really what makes Age of Slash uh, a mainstay on stall that you saw back in uh, back in OU when that thing was around. Um, AG on stall accomplished what a lot of mons couldn't, so. On a balanced approach, like Aegis Slash is amazing. Um, obviously, from an offensive standpoint, this thing is just disgusting to switch into <laughs> or to try and check. Um, it has counterplay to all of its checks. That's another reason why uh, it was pushed for the ban. Um, conventional checks are, ch are, you know, countered by Aegis Slash running a certain set. And uh, that is kind of magnified in the draft format, obviously, because you know what your opponent has. You know, if they have a, they have a way of checking Aegis, you can prep accordingly and of course you have a team of you, ha you have a whole roster that can also check Aegis Slash's checks so it's going to be a very fun mon to use I'm very excited to have it um, <laughs> I was yeah thrilled when I got to draft it so it's going to be an exciting exciting kind of experience to use this thing it's going to be interesting to see how it does in the majors and yeah I'm just excited to use it so <laughs> obviously uh, uh, you know obviously I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy about it but interested to see how you guys feel about AG so Moving on into the draft, the next one I wanted to take with Aegislash was actually Megalop, and 
It's pretty wishful thinking to think that I'd be able to take Megalo considering how many picks were after me. So I was first in the draft. I had to go, I had to wait, you know, until it went all the way down to the 16th player and then all the way back from the 16th player down to me at number one. So realistically, the chances of me getting a lock were extremely low, especially when someone, uh, especially when some people consider lop like a round one pick. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people do. Um, I don't know, I'm not really sold on it as being one round one pick, but you know, some people do. And uh, it's a very solid mon. I can understand why someone would want to take it. And you know, inevitably it, it was taken. So the dream of AG lop is is unfortunately not going to be fulfilled this season. But uh, uh, you know, I had backups, and uh, we're going to get into that a bit later on in the draft. But um, considering Lop was taken, I wanted to I wanted to move away from that kind of idea of Lop AG into a more um, into a different concept I had because um, I built a few different ideas around Age of Slash, knowing that I'd be able to get it round one. And uh, the next one I wanted to pick up was something that synergized nicely with Age of Slash, a mod that I haven't actually used in the draft format, but that I'm very excited to use. And uh, that is going to be Garchomp. So Garchomp synergizes very nicely with Aegis Slash, being able to check um, fire types with ease that may want to, you know, attack Aegis Slash. Uh, Rough Skin is really nice um, to punish knockoff spam aimed at Aegis Slash. Garchomp's, uh, you know, mixed defensive and offensive capabilities is just amazing. Like this thing has a ton of potential. Um, it, it always does well, mostly. Um, whenever any competent player is using it, this thing is um, this thing is effective. I mean. As a, as a rocker, it's very nice. It's another thing I wanted to have. I wanted to have a ton of rockers on my team that were viable. I didn't want to have, you know, a team with only a couple of rockers, which were very subpar. And I wanted to be able to share around that rock's responsibility throughout my team. So I didn't have to bring the same rocker each week. I wanted to be able to mix that up. Uh, Chomp is also a very solid scarfer. You guys know, like, that 102 speed is, is very nice for checking a lot of the base 100s, a lot of the base 90 and 80 scarfers. So yeah, Chomper is a very solid partner for AG, and uh, you guys see we're starting to create a bit of a Steel Dragon Fairy Core, so, uh, <laughs> you know, naturally the next one we had to grab, this was on the wheel pick by the way, because I am number one, so by the time it came back to me and I grabbed Chomp, uh, I had the next pick as well in the draft, so I was I was definitely thinking about Mega Guard, you guys know, <laughs> I love Mega Guard, I used it back in uh, Season 6, I believe, yeah, Season 6, uh, it's definitely a Mega close to my heart, but, um, no, I, I wanted to I wanted to take a different mega. I had a different mega in mind, um, and that meant that it freed up my fairy slot for a, a non-mega fairy and a fairy that I've wanted to use for a long time in the MPL, particularly because I used this mod back in the day, and it's so much fun to use, and it just has infinite potential in the format, and that is Clefa uh, Clefable, not Clefairy, Clefable. So this mod, ah, uh, Clef, the pink blob that never dies. <laughs> Um, yeah, Clef is, Clef is very solid. Clef is a mon that uh, I'm pretty excited to use. I used it back in an XY league before before I was on YouTube when I was just mucking around with friends in a draft league. I <laughs> I just remember using Life Orb Focus Punch Clef to, to bop a heat round after rocks. Uh, some nice heat like that. This this thing has a ton of potential uh, and synergizes extremely nicely with Aegis Slash and Garchomp. Uh, being able to take any knockoffs aimed at Aegis Slash, fire attacks, this thing can shrug off unless they're like, you know, stab flare blitzes or something. Um, very, very solid mon. Um, unaware is and Magic Guard are two of the best abilities in the game and something that my team really appreciates. Uh, mons that may attempt to capitalize on AG with either substitute or setup will be punished by Encore um, or Unaware Clef. And that's something I, I really like. I wanted to have that. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to have Lop because a fast Encore could be clutch um, versus teams that attempt to sub up on AG or even just like set up. Um, so having that Encore is really important. Um, whilst it isn't a fast Encore, it's still, it's a very solid Encore uh, and Unaware and Magic Guard are just two of the most insane abilities <laughs> in the game. So yeah, Clef is very solid. 95 special attack with the potential to run stuff like Life Orb or Carmine with Bolt Beam. Um, this thing's coverage is, is nuts and uh, yeah, offensive Clef is not to be slept on. Uh, Rizzy Power, my finals opponent last season, used the Clef very well last season, so uh, he, he's used it well in the past, Jolt has used it well in the past, um, and I'm very excited to have Clef on the squad. It's, it's going to be a mon that uh, you know can hold its own pretty much every week in any given matchup. It has ways of beating its checks, and uh, in terms of just the you know, a solid supporting mon, it can really fulfill that role. So at this stage in the draft, I did, I did again have to wait about 32, 33 picks until it was my next time to pick. And, uh, you know, a mon that I was really looking at was Rotom Wash. It was something that I really wanted because it, uh, it really complemented 
edge slash firstly being able to you know being immune to ground attacks resisting fire not caring too much about knockoff it also synergized really nicely with the mega that i wanted so uh yeah i was definitely had my eyes on rotom wash but unfortunately my man greg he was he was looking he was looking at rotom we had a chat about it he uh he'd been looking at it for a while and it did you know if it, it fit his team nicely i can understand why he took it and uh you know obviously i had to rethink the water i wanted to take on this team <laughs> and uh you know, this stage in the draft, there are a ton of good things around, ton of good waters. I wanted a solid water with Chomp and uh, AG. I think a solid water is just very nice in general. Um, I know Melodic is a bit of a is a bit of a questionable water type uh, to some people, but I was definitely thinking about it. <laughs> I enjoyed testing with Melodic in the off season in some suspect tests, and yeah, it was definitely something I was thinking about. But ultimately, I could not go past my boy Suikun from last season. Suikun. Put in the put in the work last season. If you guys remember, this thing is just insanely good. <laughs> um, Suicune forces more prep than probably any other water type does, just because of how obnoxious its sets can be. Um, in conjunction with T spikes, Vinecoon or even Crocoon is just a complete menace to take on. We saw this last season. Um, Crocoon, uh, the Vinecoon set I brought versus Mono put in a ton of work. Pretty much won the game by its, by itself. Um, a pressure is a dumb ability <laughs> that means it can can win a lot of calm mind wars especially if it's a sub variant so yeah kun is kun is a nasty one to face and it's a fantastic asset to have to this team uh, covering the ice and fire weakness from garchomp and ag respectively um, being able to check teams like being able to just calm mind up on things that can damage it super effectively and eventually shrug off attacks is just disgusting <laughs> and kun is a monster i'm very excited to have this back on the squad you can't really go wrong with suikun it's it's got a ton of versatility as well like it's not just restricted to carmine sets obviously <laughs> you know i used like enigma very natural gift versus Verd super last season and uh yeah it, it, it can put in the work <laughs> uh suikun is not to be slept on so uh the next one obviously this is a wheel pick as usual and uh it was it was a bit early to take this one definitely like some people thought this was like kind of shaking their heads wondering why i took this so early but this was a mon that i i've wanted to use for a while now and this gen it actually received a buff gaining access to toxic spikes so yeah i was pretty excited to pick up a selgor for nine points <laughs> it gives me an elite speed tier at 145 a very solid special attack a base 100 is is not bad at all solid bulk uh 80 like solid uh solid you know solid bulk with the 80 hp garbage defense but uh with a proper with a proper investment like I mean, <laughs> I made defensive ground, so defensive Iselgor is definitely not another question. Um, spike stacking, toxic spikes, final gambit. Uh, an extremely fast, one of the fastest encores in the game. Um, and a very viable Z-move user. Um, I'm going to actually tell you guys right now, uh, Garchomp and Iselgor are my Z-move mods. So we had a Z-budget of 24 points. And uh, Garchomp and Iselgor just happened to meet that point requirement perfectly, so... <laughs> they are going to be my Zemons, and Selgor is a fantastic Zemon. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's going to be a ton of fun. I'm not going to go too much into it, but this thing has some really interesting options that I'm looking forward to explore this season. So, Selgor, very solid partner to the team. Um, Spikes is definitely appreciated by the Mega I have in mind, as well as a ton of my other Mons. Um, Toxic Spikes is really appreciated by Clef, Kuhn, um, and Aegislash. Um, Garchomp really appreciates Standard Spikes. And that, yeah, it's going to be very solid on on the team. Very excited to use this. I knew someone like um, Trev or someone had the potential to grab the Silgore because <laughs> a few other people in the league do like this thing. And uh, you know, I've watched I've watched Aki use the Silgore really well over the, over the years. And uh, yeah, I've been excited to give this thing a try. So glad to be got up here. And uh, when it came back to me, um, obviously I had to wait a while for my next pick. <laughs> and uh, the next one I decided to grab was Nihilego. Nihilego. Is a mon that I've, I've used recently in uh, in another league that I was in. in a friend of mine, Carson, he had, he had a league that was going for a little while. And I inherited a team with Nihilego on it. And I really do enjoy this thing. Um, Beast Boost. Beast Boost is a ridiculously fun ability. And uh, yeah, Nihilego has the option of boosting one of three different stats. That's pretty clean. Uh, another T-Spiker, which is nice. A Toxic Spike Absorber. Another Rocker, which is important. A uh, very viable Scarper. Again, outspeeding those base 100s is pretty crucial. And uh, yeah, this thing has this thing has a lot of interesting options. Um, I, I do really enjoy using uh, Nihilego, and I think it's, again, a very solid partner for this team. Um, it, it loves to check fire types that threaten Aegislash. 
um, bug types that don't threaten me at all right now. <laughs> I checked by Nihilego. Um, and yeah, the, the support it provides to the team is, is just very nice. Um, Beast Boost in general is just a ridiculous ability once you get once you get it rolling, like it, it can run through teams with the correct set. So yeah, Nihilego was a mon that I was definitely comfortable with grabbing and uh, definitely excited to use again because I think it's uh, it offers a lot to a team. Now, at this stage, I wanted to pick up some more... Um, I wanted to pick up some things that could complement Aegislash. Uh, one of Aegislash's best checks in uh, in the format, in standard play, in any sort of format, is uh, is actually Mana Buzz, and that was the one I ended up grabbing next. For, for a couple of different reasons, I wanted a uh, solid Dark type response that could switch into Dark type attacks aimed at at Edge Slash that wasn't a that wasn't my Clef because Clef doesn't always want to get its item knocked off. Um, it also helps me versus Mono Psychics um, because Carmine Psychic is looking kind of threatening versus my team if someone does manage to lure Edge Slash. Though I obviously do have unaware Clef, but <laughs> you can never have too many responses to Psychic types because they are they are the goat really. And uh, yeah, Metabuzz is an amazing one. I've used this back in the day and I really do enjoy using it. Um, phenomenal mixed bulk with uh, a very respectable speed stat at 80. Um, this thing shrugs off hits like it's <laughs> like it's nothing. Um, Defog is also very nice. I currently do not have that on the squad. Defog is nice if I don't decide to stack and I do want to remove hazards on my side of the field. Like if I'm getting stacked, I always have Mandy to remove hazards or webs or something like that. Um, and yeah, this thing is just very solid. U-turn on Mana Buzz is, is really nice. Um, if you look at the mods that I've drafted thus far, U-turn into something like AG, U-turn into something like Garchomp, U-turn into something like Nihilego, all really solid here. Um, and the Mega I have in mind loves getting free switches in with U-turn, so Mana Buzz was a no-brainer here. Excited to have it. it. Brings really solid bulk to the team already. <laughs> and... Uh, that pattern's going to kind of continue for a bit. So the next one I drafted is uh, yeah an interesting one. It doesn't see a lot of love in the format for some reason. I think it's I think it's fantastic value at four points, <laughs> and that one is Quag's Eye. So we've got the double unaware core, uh, very solid uh, in conjunction with Clef. Obviously, um, Quag Clef Ag is just nasty, <laughs> and uh, unaware and water absorber two very solid abilities. Quag's. Uh, Quag's bulk, whilst it doesn't look too impressive on paper with uh, 85 defense, 65 speed F, uh, having that 95 base HP is very solid for it. Uh, with um, In conjunction with Garchomp, it forces opposing electrics to choose between Hidden Power Ice and Hidden Power Grass. And honestly, if you're foregoing Hidden Power Ice to hit Quag with Hidden Power Grass, you're giving Garchomp free reign over your team essentially. Like. Garchomp shrugs off Hidden Power Grasses like they're nothing, and uh, you know Quag does the same with Hidden Power Isis. So that does that does play into into my hands a fair bit in terms of prep. Um, it also does give me, a, like I mentioned, a second electric check, which is important because my team currently doesn't appreciate electrics too much. Um, it's not really weak to them, but um, obviously Kun and uh, Kun and Matabuzz don't like electric types, and uh, yeah, Quag is just fantastic for the team. Um, having another run of on means that. Opponents who try and capitalize on Age of Slash with sub or setup are punished. Um, Quag also gets a slow encore, which is kind of nice. Um, having a slow encore is is actually pretty important because you can encore mons that do try and set up in your face or sub. And uh, yeah, Curse on aware Quag is, is very solid. It can be a win con in a lot of games. A lot of teams aren't prepared prepared for stuff like that. And they will instead, you know, prepare for my uh, more offensive base mons or my kind of higher price mons. So having that, having that sleeper threat in the back is nice. <laughs> and uh, obviously at this stage in the draft, we were running kind of low on points. And, uh, you know, we have, we have chosen a pretty good team. And I knew the Mega I wanted. I knew at this stage it wasn't going to get picked. I'd asked around. And I knew that Mega was safe. So factoring in the points that I have to spend on the Mega, I only had uh, only had about eight points left at this stage in the draft. So the next one I wanted to grab was a Grass type that uh, complemented Quag very nicely and uh, gave me another poison uh, a poison one to soak up T spikes. And that is actually going to be Vile Plume. Vile Plume. <laughs> Another four point mon, I think uh, very solid in conjunction with Quag. I was looking at Amoongus, although it, uh, it was a bit expensive and I couldn't really afford it in conjunction with the Mega that I wanted and it did actually get taken. So I was uh, I opted to go with Vileplume instead and Vileplume received a really solid buff this gen getting a uh, Strength Sap, which is, yeah, which is only gonna serve to, 
improve its longevity. Um, it's pretty much, uh, it's it's like a full restore. Uh, it's not a full restore. It, it's like an intimidate plus a kind of recover in the sense that it um, it takes the opponent's attack stat and recovers that exact amount whilst lowering the uh, attack by one stage afterwards. So it's a very solid defensive mon. Um, Valplume has 110 special attack too, so it's no slouch offensively. Um, chlorophyll variants are not out of the question. With speed investment, it's outrunning base 130s, which is nuts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you run like a boosting nature, it's it's very fast. It's it's outrunning stuff like I believe it's outrunning Lop um, at um, with a timid nature. So that's pretty crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, defensively in conjunction with Quag, this thing this thing is very nice. It forms a very solid defensive core with Quag, Mandy, and um, and Aegis Slash as well. So yeah, Valplume uh, is a mon that I'm pretty excited to use. Uh, yeah, very solid. Effect Spore is a nasty ability that can punish opposing mons attempting to make contact with it. So something like Knock Off Spam, uh, Ain't It Aegis Slash, um, can be punished by Effect Spore as well as the Rocky Helmet on my team. So uh, the next mon I wanted to grab. Uh, was a mon that uh, the mon that I've seen a mon that I've seen a guy called L5 use really well <laughs> in just you um, know in, uh, in the format and uh, yeah it's a one point mon so you can't really go wrong with a one pointer <laughs> and it's it's actually Hypno so you guys know I love my bulky psychics and Hypno isn't Hypno is not the bulkiest mon in the world but it's uh, its ability for warning in conjunction with it's some very nice spit f of 115 and solid HP. Uh, make it a pretty solid check to a lot of psychic types um, running around. Uh, it gets Baton Pass as well as Calm Mind. It gets Wish Protect, obviously. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it gets stuff like Foul Play, um, Screens. It's it's very solid. Um, it's very solid for one point. It's um, a nice a nice glue to the team. Something a lot of people aren't going to prep for and something that could you know potentially catch people off guard. I'm not going to go too much into Hypno, but for one point, um, a very solid bulky psychic. You can't really go, go wrong there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the second last one I did end up grabbing in my draft is uh, is a bit of a nice. Uh, it's not even a meme. This thing is this thing is legit. Like forget forget all those people who say this mon is is a non mon. Uh, my boy Avalog at two points is is uh, a straight up machine. This this thing this thing <laughs> he, he here's a calc to kind of illustrate how fucked this thing's bulk is. Mega Morwell's Adam play rough cannot two a ko. And Avalog, uh, with a sassy nature and zero defense investment, so that, that that just shows you how ridiculously insane this thing's bulk is. Um, Avalog is Avalog's pretty important for a particular mon that does threaten my my team offensively. I'm not going to obviously say what it is, but um, in the instance that I do play it, Avalog is uh, definitely going to come in handy there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this thing has 117 base attack, so that's that's not bad either. Like Trick Room Avalog is, is definitely an option, um, but ultimately this thing is is just a very nice lure for special attackers with Miracoat and Spit F investment. Uh, it gets recover, which is solid. It gives me spin, which is nice because I don't have that currently, and I have stacking options. So sometimes I may not want to defog Moan has its away. Um, but yeah, Avalog won't be coming to a ton of games, but you know it is the goat ice type. Had to had to do my man Aki some justice by drafting an ice type. He is the ice type gym leader after all, and you know had to give him some love there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we both we both had a good laugh, and uh, you know we had to draft Avalog. This thing is this thing is nice. Uh, you know, sleep on this thing, and it'll it'll do some damage. Um, but at this stage in the draft, we had uh, we we taken eleven mons this season. We were allowed to grab twelve if we wanted, so. I had 15, or I had 16 points left, and I knew the Mega that I wanted was going to be around, so I had waited until the last pick of the entire draft to grab my Mega, which is Mega Medicham. Mega Medi is, uh, yeah, Mega Medi is is an interesting one. You, you guys know how strong this thing is, uh, with no attack investment uh, and a neutral nature. So, like with a serious nature, this thing has more attack than Adamant Mega Galate. Just to put into perspective. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. With a stronger stab move and high jump kick than close combat, it's uh, it's essentially a more offensive, uh, slightly slower, uh, less bulkier Mega Gallade. Um, but the power that it does have is just ridiculous. Uh, with dual priority and fake out and bullet punch, it brings a lot to the team. Uh, Baton Pass in conjunction with Aegis Slash is is too nice for those psychics that want to switch in on on Medi. Um, I can always Baton Pass into Ag. Uh, I could baton pass it to something like Mandy or Clef, um, but.
but yeah, the, the true kind of value in Medi lies with its ability to break teams. So if, if Medi breaks something like Nihil Leg or Age, you can just go ham. Um, <laughs> and it's just a very exciting one to use. I used this back back in the day in a league that I was in. And uh, back in, I think it was XY, had it on a team with Mandibuzz and like Weaver. So much fun to use. Very excited to use this thing in conjunction with AG. And yeah, it's shaping up to be a pretty fun team. Um, pretty pretty happy with it overall. <laughs> uh, a few interesting defensive ones like Avalog and Hypno, but uh, I think overall the team has a ton of solid offensive and defensive synergy. I'm keen to hear you know how you guys think of the team. Let me know in the comments below what you, what your kind of what are your thoughts. <laughs> Uh, ultimately, I'm, I'm very happy with the squad I have drafted this season. I may, you know, make changes during the season, uh, make some drops, make some uh, make some trades potentially. But at this stage, I'm pretty happy with the squad that I have drafted. Excited to get into building and to be bringing you guys my week one, uh, which should be going up over the next couple of weeks. So get get excited for that. We will be facing off against the Verd, who was my semis semi-finals opponent from last season of the MPL. I'm going to include a playlist down below that has my Season 7 MPL game for any new subscribers that may have joined recently and are interested in learning more about the MPL or seeing my past runs in that, so yeah, feel free to check that out. Also, I want to thank you guys so much for 500 subs that recently hit 500 and uh, yeah, it's pretty clean. I do appreciate the support <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be it from me, so if you guys did like uh, my team, let me know in the comments. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.